Ah, see him a beast when he hear that sound like ah, Yeah, beat on the beat when he hear that sound like Ooh, Yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like ha, Yeah, me, I'm a G ring he in the sound like Hey everybody, welcome to the Scrap News. Jake Noaker here and with me today fighting at Octagon 42, the Tigress Catalina Dalista. Catalina, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. About a week out from the fight, almost fight week. What's your energy like? Yes, I'm uh, just, yeah, the, the training was hard, so, um, but I'm really energized and um, really motivated for the fight. So, yeah, if it's like, I, I can start now. <laughs> and, you know, big fight, another UFC vet, Isabella de, de Padua. I think I got her name right. What are your thoughts on her as an opponent? Um, yeah, she's a tough girl. Um, she's a brawler. Um, she has a, a good grappling, but yeah, I can beat her. So, but she's yeah, I I may not uh, underestimate her because she's yeah, like you said, a UFC veteran, and she's not bad. So I I just watched your fight against Mallory Martin before we did this interview. Incredible performance! Congratulations! And okay. something I noticed is you're a great striker. But you also just don't really get taken down easily. So from an outside perspective, looking at this fight, I feel like your opponent's going to have a lot of problems because she is, like you said, primarily a grappler. So how do you feel like your two styles clash up against each other? Um, yeah, um, I, I think it uh, could be on every level. So um, when when it's uh, coming to wrestling, uh, as you said, I have a good defense. But I um, also have a good offense. So um, if I want to, I can take it to the ground. And I can also make it a striking match. So uh, in my opinion, I can just, um, yeah, like um, say uh, in yeah which uh, dimension we will go. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you straight up for a prediction unless you want to give me one. But how do you think, how do you envision this fight goes down? It's um always different to say uh because like it's yeah the first time we will uh come together there in the cage event but um yeah like uh I'm uh often going um on the points and I it could be that it's uh, um again for the same that uh, I will uh, win the fight um via unanimous decision. But I will uh, try to to get it uh, down earlier by uh, maybe by striking with a submission ending. But yeah, we will see. That that was actually my next question. I saw that you haven't gotten a finish in two years since 2019. Actually, on Monday, it will be two years on the dot. Are you like extra hungry at all to get a finish or do you not really care? Because your decisions are very dominant. Yeah, that's uh, what I like, I like dominating the fight. Like it's it's not that I say okay I will go <laughs> through all the rounds uh, if there's the uh, opportunity to uh, end before it's perfect, but um I I guess it's kind of my style to uh, like to dominate to to make the life of opponents uh, really uh, difficult in this situation, but yeah I uh, was like I'm always work working hard and uh, try to develop myself so maybe there's the time to to get the uh, fights finished earlier. And and you're on a huge win streak here against UFC veterans, K1 elite strikers, like very impressive. What happened after the two losses? Did like something click? Was there a resurgence, a new sort of energy? Like where did this win streak come from? Um, actually, I didn't change anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, like always a hard worker. I uh, go into training every day. I in every training, I try to to get my best and try to yeah develop my skills. Um, I guess the uh, two losses were like it was accidentally. It was like uh, one one day was not my my day, and the other fight it was like I I could have won the fight, but it was a really close one and a really good opponent, and maybe I wasn't like I just needed a few more months or years. And yeah, now I really feel confident and uh, yeah, we'll hopefully continue the win streak. Well, I mean, you got a number three next to your name, number three ranked straw weight in Octagon. And I know there's a vacant belt sitting on the line eventually. Do you think a win here puts you in the titles, title of contention? I think uh, this win will be very important for an upcoming title fight. 
I guess if I uh, just win the fight, it's uh, like I, I deserve the title fight then. So, um, yeah, I will give uh, my very best as always. And, um, yeah, hope that the title fight is coming afterwards. And I'm not really asking you to look past Isabella. So if you don't want to answer this question, you can tell me, no problem. But if you do get the title shot next, is there anyone you would like to fight for that belt? Actually, I don't care. I, um, yeah, I'm really trustful to the octagon matchmaking and to my manager. And I'm sure that they will uh, get a, a fitting opponent, which uh, is like um, challenging me and uh, which will be a really good fight to watch. So I, I don't care which name it is in the end. And for this fight, you're training at MMA Spirit, correct? Yeah, right. Uh, how is that, Jim? How has camp been? And then for those who don't know, can you just tell us about some of your teammates and coaches? Yeah, uh, we have a, like a yeah competitor group of like, I think maybe a little bit less than 20 people uh, training every day together. Our head coach is Mohamed Wadi. He's a, a really good striking coach uh, and has a good knowledge when it comes to MMA. And um yeah, um, my manager is Nils Schlegel, which is the manager of the gym uh, also. Um, yeah, and uh, one of my, like, who's um, also coming to my uh, corner this time is Dan uh, Daniel Weichel. Uh, I think many people will know him from Bellator. He's a really experienced and good fighter. Uh, other names are, for example, Christian Eckerlin or uh, Mad Max Koga, Stefan Pütz, and uh, a lot of, uh, like, upcoming future fighters it's a uh, fantastic gym sorry if you hear something going crazy in the background my dog's having a wild nap in there but um great gym you train at fantastic names and that's a crazy corner you're gonna have too something i noticed about your record as well is that you've had 11 professional fights since 2019 does being so busy help your performance is that something you try to keep doing is staying busy uh, uh sorry i just didn't get the question right no worries um so I, you you've just been you, you fought 11 times since 2019 yeah. why is that do you like to stay busy does that help your performance uh um yeah actually i i do like i'm always in training i'm always fit i um i'm normally i'm lucky when it comes to injury so i'm hardly not injured for uh, over the time and um yeah, it was like uh, there was uh, one year uh, where it was a little bit hard to uh, to get fights in. It was only two in a year because like we uh, were struggling to uh, find fitting opponents. But uh, yeah, actually, I'm uh, really happy when I can uh, fight regularly. So um, I'm if I f uh, fight or don't fight, I'm in training regularly. But it's like uh, it's always like a chance to challenge yourself and and see if the things of the training are working out or if you have to change something. And this is now your third fight with Octagon as a promotion. How do you like being with Octagon? Are you are you uh, enjoying your time with them? Uh, no, I, uh, I'm not saying something uh, wrong. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can say uh, whatever you want. What are they going to do? <laughs> fire you? <laughs> No, it's a really cool organization. So I, I really like their professionality. Um, it's always fun to work with them. They are really like kind people. It's a yeah, cool atmosphere, uh, atmosphere of the people of the Octagon team, but also at the events. So they are really um doing big and cool events with a cool fan base. And yeah, I really like it to be there. And yeah, that's uh, uh because I are. Uh, yeah, uh, that is why I fight with, uh, the third time there. So I, I really like it. And even as like a media member myself, they're great to work with and they put on incredible shows. What are your ultimate goals with the promotion? Um. So like it's the, the next thing is, uh, as you said before, the, the title shot would be really cool to get the title in this division and yeah after that uh, we will see i'm just trying to uh, think like fight by fight so now my focus is on uh, isabella de padua and after that it would be a pleasure to to fight the title shot but first i have to win the fight so that's their main goal now understood understood and like like we've been talking about incredible fight everybody make sure you're watching it april 29th octagon 42 and 
Catalina, in terms of your entire career, not just now, if you're able to look ahead at all, what other goals do you have like beyond Octagon? Do you ever want to fight for another promotion as in like UFC, PFL? I know you've been to Bellator before. So what are your thoughts in terms of that? Um, actually, I'm uh, like not focused on um, specific uh, names or organizations where I have to fight and who I have to uh, I want to fight against. Like my main focus is on um, develop myself further. So I uh, want to develop from fight to fight and get uh, better, improve step by step. And um, yeah, this is why I cannot really say that I, okay, I want to go to UFC or something. For for sure, they have uh, really good people. They are world class uh, fighters. But um, if uh, frame conditions are uh, are good, I'm also uh, fine with other organizations. So I just want to, yeah, have like challenges, fight by fight, and just uh, get going and improve. Sure. And if everything goes well, if you're staying healthy. What does the rest of your 2023 look like? How many fights do you want to get in? Um, so uh, that's the first fight I'm doing this year on 29th April. So I guess uh, like um, it's planned to uh, to fight again in, in June. Because there's a, a yeah, big octagon event in uh, Oberhausen, Germany. And after that, we will see. I guess it's not the last fight of the year um, for like, it, yeah. One or two more will be awesome. possible. Love it. The more the more Tigers fights we get, the happier I am. So that is good news to me. And uh, Katharina, before we get out of here, we've been talking fights for like 15 minutes now. I want to take a break and just ask about you as a person. When you're not a fighter, when you're not training, if that is ever a time in your life, uh, how do you spend your free time? Do you have any hobbies or interests that aren't related to MMA? um <laughs> more or less like i, I um, also have a part-time job and uh, jobbing in the gym so there's actually not so much time uh, left after training and everything so uh yeah i just like uh like walking like uh like um what's the term uh english meaning like going out at the yeah outside hanging uh, out yeah hang, yeah hang around with uh, family or friends and cooking or sometimes i actually don't know the, the english word for it uh, like um you can uh cr crotchet work is it this oh i don't even know what you're <laughs> like uh no i don't have something here just for, is it an um, activity or a food it's an activity like to calm down uh, with um with wool and you you try to knitting knitting is that it? Like, it's, like uh, maybe. <laughs> like, 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 like making like sweaters out of wool and stuff, socks. Yes, but uh, I'm doing like uh, baby uh, things, uh, toys. Uh, I think the, the English word is crochet. Crochet, crochet. I don't know. I just might not know this. I this might just be above me, you know. Okay. Yeah. I don't. Uh, it's it's just something to to calm down after after training and uh, yeah. <laughs> No, that's good that you have outlets outside of training. A lot of fighters just say, no, I only train and then I go to bed and wake up and do it again. And I think it's important to give your mind something else to do every now and then, you know? Yeah, or something. Else. Yeah, it's always good just right. to keep your mind off the mat. And Katarina, last thing for me before we get out of here, you have so many fans, so many eyes are going to be watching this Octagon card and are excited to see you fight. Is there anything you would like to say to everybody? The mic is yours and you can talk in English, German, whatever you would like. Okay, actually, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, happy if uh, many people uh, watch my fight and uh, will be happy with my performance. And yes, uh, that's it. Don't miss it. Absolutely. Do not miss it. Octagon 42, April 29th. Catalina Delista gets it done. Catalina, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And for real, best of luck. I can't wait. Thanks.